how many people we have on the line with us this morning, but um, I know we're, we're a little out of the habit with people traveling and taking vacations and um, getting ready for school to start this week, so hopefully um, there are a number of you hopping on this morning. We're really happy to be back after a few weeks off for vacation. Um, this morning, as many of you know, we have a special tradition of doing evening hymns on Labor Day weekend. So that is why you will be hearing all evening hymns today. We have three prepared for you by our virtual choir, so we hope that you enjoy those. We will begin on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song of praise this morning will be hymn number 25, O Gracious Light. It will be done in a round, so try to keep up with our virtual choir, hymn number 25. O oh, gracious light, Lord Jesus Christ, in youth of Christ, let glory shine, in mortal glory, in mortal glory, in blessed only Son. Now sunset comes, but light shines forth, but lamp shines with the blue starlight. Praise Father, Son, and Spirit, Son, who dwells in God, eternal life. Worthy are you, our day of praise, O Son of God, my Son of God. Wherefore you are, where are you? And in me I have seen the highest heaven adorned. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning will be from the Letter to the Romans, read by Fred Smolkin. A reading from the Epistle to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us than it was when we became believers. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 149 on page 807 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 807, Psalm 149, reading together. Hallelujah! Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. 
Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice and triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed, this is the glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. be doing the sermon a little differently. It, it's actually the same way we always used to do it, but a little differently than we've been doing it since we've been recording everything. Um, we had terrible internet problems. The last two weeks we have lost internet many times a day, every single day. We think it's finally resolved, but it was very difficult to get online, do any research, get to any online books. Um, and also terrible trouble um, preparing videos and uploading. So, um, we will be doing the video sort of old school, just the sermon, old school. So not by video, but me just sitting here talking to you the same way that I would um, if you were all here with me. So you're all here with me, it just looks a little different. And um, I can see you in the chat, I believe. Jen is out watching the chat from our computer and um, I am here seeing it on my phone. So for those of you who are on this morning, I am gonna ask um, for some responses in the chat. Um, so get your device ready, find the chat, be ready to talk back to me um, in the same way that I sometimes would stand here in church and say, give me an example of this or tell me about that. Um, and you would talk back to me, um, talk back to me in the chat today if you are willing and we'll see how it works. Sometimes there's a little bit of lag time. Um, so if I'm not getting the responses fast enough, then we'll know that I shouldn't ask you to do that again in the future. This is just an experiment. Um, so this morning, um, if you are on, again, get your device ready, get ready with your chat. They're very easy questions, I promise. Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about evening. So as I said earlier, um, and am I in a good spot? I've never done the sermon on the camera before. Am I close enough? Jen and Sam, how do I look? Should I be closer? I don't think I can get any closer, <laughs> so I'll stand right here, um, and hopefully you can see me and hear me and engage with me, um, just as you would here. Uh, but as I said earlier, we do evening hymns on Labor Day weekend, and we started this as a tradition a few years ago, um, because as you know, we often do pick your own hymns throughout the summer, and at one point, Jen and I realized that 
We don't do a lot of evening services here, so we don't have a lot of opportunities to sing some of those great old evening hymns that we love, like Abide With Me or The Day Thou Gavest, O Lord, Has Ended. Um, so many of those hymns that are familiar to us, uh, but we just don't get to do them very often. So we started doing them on Labor Day weekend, um, partly just for fun, but it also seems a bit fitting because Labor Day does kind of feel like the ending of something. It's sort of the unofficial end of summer. Um, and out in nature, we can see already that the days are getting a little shorter and the darkness is growing a little longer. It's getting darker earlier in the evening. Um, so it's a, a great weekend to pull out some of these hymns and do our evening hymns. So I just wanna talk for a couple of brief minutes about evening. So here is where I'm going to ask you to start talking back to me and the first question is really simple. We're going to talk a little bit about our lives in the evening but the first thing I want to know is what time you eat dinner or supper whichever you call it um, but when do you eat? Most of us have an exact time we eat. Sometimes it's a variation, maybe between 6.30 and 7 or between 7 and 7.30, but most of us have a pretty set schedule. Um, unless our families are running all over the place, which we'll get to in a minute, um, we have a pretty set schedule of what time we eat. So super easy question, just put in the chat if you are willing, um, and we'll see how this works, what time you eat dinner. So I'm seeing some things coming through, and Joe Stewart Sicking tells us, yes, of course, as you can see in the chat, we eat at 5.30. Autism is non-negotiable. We eat at 5.30. By the way, Simon also gets a snack at 2.42 every day and likes to come down for breakfast at 8.18 in the morning. So, you know, it's lucky we just got it to a round number. 5.30 is when we eat. So Val Smolkin, now this is a big variation, 5.30 to 7, that's quite a variation there. Uh, Mary Jane says they eat uh, at 6 or 6.30, Scott Horner says 6.30, Liz Seek says between 6 and 7. Uh, Deborah Cunningham, 100% variable because I live alone. That's a good way to do it. If you're living alone, you get to eat whenever you want. How about you, Jen? You live alone. I do the same. It's very variable. So when she's hungry, she eats. Or when she has time, she eats. She probably doesn't have time to eat. We might need to talk about that. Uh, let's see. Doug Watley says 6.30. Um, and Rudy says between 6.30 and 7. Andy Connor says 5.30 or 6 or whenever it's ready. Um, so, so there's some variation there. So think about your evening. A lot of people think about evening starting as they're getting home from work or as they're eating dinner. And my next question, also very easy, chat away. What are some things you do in the evening? So when you think about evening time at your house, either right before dinner or right after dinner, as you're getting into that time, what are some of the things that you do? So start sending those through and we'll talk about those a little bit. Um, I know, Joe Stewart Sicking should be putting in the chat if he hasn't already. Um, he teaches in the evenings. He teaches graduate students. Many of them work during the day, so all of their classes are in the evening. So a lot of students are attending classes. Uh, a lot of professors are doing their teaching. And during non-COVID times, class doesn't even end until 9.30 and Joe isn't home until 10 or later at night, which I think is quite a long day. Um, Rudy watches the evening news. Um, Val Smolkin watches Escape to the Chateau. What, what is that? I don't know what that is. We might have to find out, but she's watching something. How many of you are binge watching Netflix at night, especially if you don't have young children to entertain at home? Mary Jane says they read, watch a movie, work on the computer. Uh, Scott Horner, they water the garden, very important thing to do at the end of the day. Watch Jeopardy, get ready for the next day. That's an important one, getting ready for the next day. Uh, Deborah Cunningham turns the ringer off the landline during the evening. Oh, let's come back to that. Deborah, you would make an excellent monk living in a monastery. Um, Doug Watley, go for a walk, read, do work. Um, Doug Watley, respond and let me know, or anyone else with children, I want to know the latest practices and games your children have had in the evening. 
that you've had to take them to or go and watch. Practices and games for athletics in the evening. What time have those gone up to for you? Andy Connor says, get the children into bed. Such an important part of the evening. You've got to get the children into bed or you don't get anything else done or you don't get to go to sleep. Um, Val Smalkin says, yes, watching the news. Liz Seek, read, yard work, watch television. Um, I've heard people, I haven't seen an answer come through yet, but um, I've heard people tell me they're taking kids to games and practices, even on weeknights, around as late as nine or 10. We know they're hope happening at six, seven, eight o'clock, but I've heard people say around nine o'clock or even later, um, because there are not enough gymnasiums and there are too many teams and the way things get scheduled, sometimes it just has to be really late at night when you get a practice time um, or a game time. So uh, Doug Watley says they happen, yes, there we have it, up until 9.30. Practices often end as late as 9.30. Um, so you figure by the time you get home and get calmed down, or we all know some kids are finishing homework really late at night, so kids are getting in bed later and later. So another thing that I often hear people talk about, um, and some of you mentioned this, is um, either you're finishing work that didn't get done during the day, or I've heard people say, I'm doing work to get ready for my meetings that are happening the next day. So you're not quite ready yet for that client or whatever's coming up, and so you're doing work at night to get everything ready for the next day. So just think about all of that for a minute and think about how hectic our lives are. We've talked about this many, many times in the past, that life seems very hectic, and it really doesn't matter the time of day, does it? There are sports or swimming and things like that um, that meet early in the morning. There's school and work and meetings all day long. Um, now in the evening, it's not like the old days where, you know, when it got dark, things slowed down a little bit and people stayed home. We do things well into the night. So as I said, that finishing from the day or getting ready from the next day or running the kids around or whatever it is they have. Um, we have meetings going on here at the church until 9 and 9.30, depending on which scout group is meeting or the vestry or, or other things happening. Um, so maybe you're, you're one of those lucky people who's found a little more rhythm to life. Perhaps your children are grown, perhaps you're retired, perhaps you're one of our broad meters. I'm guessing there are a few of you out there who have mastered the ability to calm your lives in the evening. But that's not typical. It's not typical of most people. And when we take a look for just a minute um, at the people who have learned to live life with the most rhythm, when I think of the people who have learned to live with the most rhythm to their days and seasons, I think of monks living in a monastery or nuns living in a convent. Um, and that sort of monastic life has a very particular rhythm to it. Um, so if we go to try to learn a little bit from these people who have mastered living life with a rhythm, and we look at what their life looks like in the evening, um, the first thing I want to go back to is the rule of St. Benedict. So remember that Benedict wrote a rule by which all of his monks would live, um, no matter where the monastery was located. Um, he wrote this in the 500s, right around 516, so it's very old. This has been a way of life with us for a very long time. And he says this, so remember that Vespers, monks, monks pray at many different times of day, at the exact time of day. I think it's nine, nine exact times of day, usually. Um, and Vespers is what happens right before supper in the late afternoon or early evenings. They go to Vespers, say their prayers, and then go to their supper. Um, so when he writes about this, he says, and if you have it, like I know Susan Baxter and some others of you have your, your rule of St. Benedict close by, this is chapter 41, <laughs> says, let Vespers be celebrated early enough so that there is no need for a lamp while eating. So if you're doing Vespers and going directly to supper, no need for a lamp during the supper. And everything can be finished by daylight. 
Indeed, at all times, let supper or the hour of the fast day meal be so scheduled that everything can be done by daylight. So in their world, things would shift a little bit based on the sun and the hours of the day and when there was daylight. So they would eat and retire earlier when there was more darkness and perhaps be up slightly later when there's more light. But everything had to be done by daylight and they weren't to be working or eating supper by a lamp. So later they could pray and do all of their Lectio Divina and the other things of prayer and study they were supposed to be doing in the evening. That could be done by lamp, but no work and no supper by lamp. Then Compline, which happens in the evening, it's the last service of the day, for them often around 7 or 7.30. So just when our meetings are beginning for the night, it's when their final prayers are ending. So Compline taking place, keep in mind, around 7 or 7.30, it says they should pray Compline, and on leaving Compline, no one will be permitted to speak further. If anyone is found to transgress this rule, he must be subjected to severe punishment. So, if you speak after Compline ends at 8 p.m. and you're supposed to be going and doing your prayers and retiring for the night, severe punishment. It doesn't specify what that means, but use your imagination. Except on occasions when guests require attention, so issues of hospitality are very important, or if the abbot wishes to give someone a command, but even this is to be done with the utmost seriousness and proper restraint. So even if the abbot wants to give a command, the abbot has to think very carefully as to whether or not this is really necessary at this time or if it can wait until the next day and take this with the utmost seriousness and restraint if they're going to give someone a command after Compline ends. So this starts giving us the idea that when we think about evening for these people who live with this rhythm, that they are having dinner or supper, and then they are having um, Compline, and then after that, no work, no preparation for the next day, no finishing up whatever they didn't get done today. All of the work is finished, and all they're doing in the evening after supper is praying and doing Lexio Divina, perhaps that one more communal prayer of Compline, and then once that Compline ends, it is time to go to your chamber and retire. So they are going to bed around eight o'clock. Now, I'm sure Val loves that. Val goes to bed at eight o'clock, but they do get up at 3 a.m. We'll talk about that another time. But nonetheless, once it gets dark in the evening, the work is finished. So. Let this be a lesson and a point of reflection for us that for people who actually work very hard, engage in a lot of manual labor, they work really hard during the day, but then there's a point where it ends. And it ends when the evening comes and the darkness is setting in and they've been fed and sustained with that last meal of the day of supper. And as they go on, then the words that characterize the rest of the evening are calm, silence, stillness, reading, and prayer. Those are how things go to sustain you in the evening hours, prepare you for your rest, and that sustenance from the evening hours and from your rest is what helps you get up and go again the next day with all of the things that you have to do. So there are just a couple of points of reflection here that you can take along with you. So one is just simply to reflect a little on how busy life can get and how we keep it going and going and going until all hours of the day and night uh, and how important it is to find those times, whether we do it in the evening or we do it at other times of day based on our own cultural situation, but are we actually finding those times that sustain us, those times of silence, calm, prayer, meals, simple communal prayers, silence, all of these things, are we finding the time for these and putting them in the proper place so they can actually sustain us in our lives? I heard a lot of people talking about this when the quarantine began, that life seemed slower. There was a little less chaos. 
And I'm finding that while people said, oh, I hope this will change the way we live, it's not. It's already starting again. It's already starting up. School is beginning. Program years are beginning. If we can't be virtual, if we can't be in person, then we're going to be virtual. We're going to have all of our meetings. We're setting up our evening Zoom meetings. We're doing all of the things that we used to do. So remember, look at the lessons we've learned from this rhythm of life in the monastery, but look at what we also learned from our own quarantine and truly consider, are we doing the things we need to do to slow down and have a little calm and silence and make sure that we are sustaining ourselves for everything that is gonna come at us during the day. And my second and final point of reflection, this time in our culture, in our society, feels like an evening time. It feels like a time of more darkness than light. So we might be thinking about all of the racial tensions and all of the things going on in different cities around the country. We might be thinking about the pandemic itself and the incredible anxiety over never knowing what's coming next, either with the pandemic or with how we're supposed to be living. Are the kids going to school? Are we going to work? Are we quarantining? Are we not? We're never quite sure how things are today or what they're going to be tomorrow or just what's coming next. It breeds a lot of anxiety and unsettledness in us. Um, and then of course there's politics and all of the things that we're seeing on the news and the truths and the half truths and the no truths and all of the insanity that we're living in right now. It does feel sometimes, and I've heard people say this, like there is more darkness than light. And so the question metaphorically becomes, if we know what sustains us in the evening to get us ready for the next day, if we're living in a time of metaphorical evening or metaphorical darkness, what are the things that sustain us so that we can then continue to go out and do what we're called to do? Silence, calm, sustenance, prayer, silence together, prayers in community, all of these are the things that we do to sustain ourselves. So whether you're reflecting on our culture and the darkness that seems to swirl around us at times, or you're reflecting on your own life and the anxieties and chaos and busyness that surrounds us at times, ask yourself the questions and find some answers for how you and all of us might find ways to cultivate the calm and the silence and the stillness that will hopefully continue to sustain us as we do what we're called to do in this world. Amen. See, usually we're able to reset ourselves while while the sermon is ending on the video, so we, <laughs> we have to learn how to do this a little more quickly. We will continue with the prayers of the people, and in just a moment, um, I do want to grab one more thing up here. We will begin with a moment of silence, um, when you might think of your own prayers, thanksgivings, intercessions, um, either silently or if you are with someone at home, Please feel free to share those prayers aloud with them, but we will begin with that moment of silence. the unemployed.
Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Guide the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for social justice. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray especially for those who have asked for our prayers, Cynthia Ballard, Caleb Light, Jim Brown, Caroline Connor, Gretchen Marcus, Jen Nugent, Mary Frances Schmidt, Laura Lynn Renner, Ron Shanks, Claire Sherman, Laura Strait, Andrea Summers, Matthew Ringrose, Eva Whiteley, and Laurie Schlitz. We pray for the repose of the soul of Marge Tuttle, who died last week. And a final prayer for these times in which we live. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the flexibility to care for our families remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As we walk with God, let us choose love during this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other. Give us patience to do your will and let us find ways to be the tender embrace of God to our neighbor. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, Jen. Peace, Megan. Peace be with you, Sam. Peace, Sam. peace be with you, everyone out there. Um, lovely to have all of you back and to see everyone. Thank you for participating in the sermon today. In just a moment, we will play an offertory hymn um, while I prepare the table, um, and we will continue, if you have it, to use the prayer that we had been using. Um, if you have your small handout, it is prayer one from Enriching Our Worship. We will continue with that momentarily. And the hymn led by the virtual choir for the offertory is Abide With Me, which is 662. Hymn number 662, Abide With Me.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Joseph, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. If you have it, please join in the prayer for spiritual communion. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. 
We have several announcements for today. Um, first, um, let me apologize to Scott Horner because, or Claudia or whoever typed it in, um, I think I accidentally hit something on my phone when I was scrolling and deleted one of your comments. So let it be known that there is absolutely nothing wrong with watching Jeopardy in the evening. I did not delete the comment due to its content. Um, I love Jeopardy. In fact, a couple of weeks ago when I was on vacation, it was the college championships. So our family sat around on vacation and played several of the nights and those college ones are much more to my level. So I really like that week on, on Jeopardy. Um, so sorry about the deletion of the comment there if you saw that in the scrolling. Um, also, as you heard in the prayers of the people, um, and, and many of you have already heard, Marge Tuttle did just pass away. Um, so well over a hundred years of wonderful life that she had. Um, so she, she did live a good life and I was really happy to hear when I talked to her son um, her daughters are up here, but her son, I believe, is in Williamsburg. Um, and when I talked to him, he said both daughters were actually able to be there. Um, and that's a really wonderful thing because not only can people not make it sometimes in general, but during COVID time, we know there are times when people have not been able to have their families with them at the end of their life. Um, so I was really happy to hear that her daughters were able to be there um, when she died. Um, so the family, um, of course, as I, I said um, to her son when we were talking, that normally I would go to the funeral and some other um, parishioners, I'm sure, would try to attend under normal circumstances. But during these times of the pandemic, everyone is trying to keep everything very, um, very low numbers and very distanced. So um, this time we will, we will not do that. Um, but the family will be having a very small, simple graveside service in about a week. Um, to bury her. So um, that will all be done. I believe it is going to be a week from Monday. Um, so about a week from now. Um, so please um, know that Marge Tuttle has passed away. Pray for the repose of her soul and give thanks for her wonderful and amazing and happy life. Um, outreach. I will do some announcements next week about outreach. I'm still getting a little organized after getting back from vacation, so I plan to check in soon on the progress of um, the Cockeysville Middle School being part of the Student Support Network. My understanding right as I was leaving is that they had gotten all of the donations they needed to become part of the Student Support Network, um, so hopefully we can start some conversations with them about how our donations can go towards supporting them as they get started. Um, so keep any monetary donations coming for the Student Support Network and hopefully I'll have more information in the next one or two Sundays to share with you about the specifics of what we can do or if there are any other specific collections that we can do. Uh, the parish calendar is being worked on. I'm not quite finished with it yet. Um, but if you go to the online parish calendar, um, a lot of the Sunday stuff, services are on there um, up until Christmas. Christmas itself is a bit of a question mark and I have not done anything after Christmas. Um, but from now until the week leading up to Christmas, um, I have most of the services and church things in there. I'm gonna double check it and see what else still needs to be added. I still have to go back this week and add scouts and any other meetings. Um, so I just wanna remind you that we're trying really hard to keep people appropriately distanced and not mix groups together. For example, every scout group has to take attendance and tell me exactly who was there at every meeting. So we really don't want people wandering in and out when they're here and that sort of thing. Um, so just to reduce all of those exposures and keep groups together, we really don't want people here at the same time. So I'm just gonna remind you that if you're going to be here at all, um, and after about another week or two, this will include the butterfly garden because there are um, some scout things that are happening um, up here, down in the field, and sort of all around the campus. So we'll wanna check in about that as well. Um, so please make sure you're scheduling. And by scheduling, I mean, you really have to tell me a little bit in advance. If you just text me and say that you're coming, that doesn't always give me time. If I don't have my phone or I'm in a meeting or something, it doesn't always give me time to see it and then be able to tell you yes or no. Um, so, so if you're just dropping off food or, or you know something, um, we can try to maybe work on a little bit more in advance how to do that. 
Um, so let's be in touch about those things over the next week or two as we figure out the rhythm to how this is going to work during the fall and um, we'll get it all worked out and I'll let you know in the next week or two when the schedule is absolutely set online. Um, but for now it's about 75% it's about done. So we're almost there with getting everything organized. And finally, um, next week will be another outdoor worship opportunity. So Sunday the 13th, right? Yes. The 13th. Today's the 6th, the 13th. Um, so Sunday the 13th, um, the Sunday after Labor Day weekend is usually when we would do our Mass in the Grass with the quiz game show and all of the other fun things that we do on that day. So we are going to keep that tradition the same. We'll just be a little more spread out um, and have the masks on. So please remember, you do need to bring your own chair and you do need to wear a mask. Um, but please come, try to get here a little early for the 1015 service so we can get everyone set up and situated. We will still live stream the service, so if you are unable to come or not comfortable coming in person, you will be able to watch it all online right here as usual, so I will send out the link. If it rains, it does look like they're predicting rain later in the week. If it looks like Sunday is going to be a really rainy day and we can't make it happen, we will postpone it a week, I think. We don't have anything special happening the 20th, do we? I don't think so. Okay. So we will, because this is a day we really want to do, we will postpone it a week if, if the rain looks really bad and we'll just do a simple online service. So watch for more information about that Friday and Saturday as we get a better handle on the weather. But hopefully uh, we will be able to be outdoors, have the mass in the grass, and live stream it as well and all be together next Sunday. In, uh, let's see, I think it was Friday. Um, Thursday or Friday, you should have received a parish email that had to do with a surprise um, that is happening on the 13th. If you did not receive the parish email about the surprise on the 13th, email me directly. I will get the information to you um, or ask a friend in the congregation if they got it and they can forward it along. Um, but absolutely make sure you get the information about the surprise on the 13th. That's all I'm going to say about it right now. Um, and I think that's it. Have I covered everything? I think it's a so. lot of getting organized after being back from vacation and trying to start off the year um, together. So please let me know if you have any questions. We will try to get them answered um, and get ourselves all ready to go for our mostly virtual program year that begins next week. And with that, I will invite you, if you have your prayer book or if you know it by heart, um, to join for the prayer of St. Francis on page, whoops, I just lost it, page 833. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. May you be a new creation. Oh. We have a closing hymn today. We have a closing hymn. I almost forgot. We can't skip our final evening hymn of the day. So after the blessing, be ready for another hymn. May you be a new creation. Christ for those to whom Christ will send you. And go forth with the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit upon you now and always. Amen. Our final hymn with our virtual choir will be The Day Thou Gavest, O Lord, Hath Ended. And it is hymn number 24. Four. Hymn number 24.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.